So here we are in the old works yard and here is the entrance on the south side of the garage down into the lock burn. Well here we are going down the manhole uh, into the lock burn. There's my light source. Here I'm crawling along the first bit which it has to be said is a bit of a challenge. It's a low brick vaulted section about two meters long working westwards from the entry point and you have to crawl along because there's only about 18 inches at the most between the crown of the vault and the silt so you have to crawl along like a worm or no man as worms are sometimes called Psalm 22 and the first interesting challenge of course is a place where there are slightly ominous looking uh, blocks of stone which have fallen through from the vault presumably but uh, such things no longer worry us. We eventually emerge into a, a bigger space where we have an entirely stone vaulted section. And look, there's a bone. Some previous chap who came down here and didn't quite make it. I'm going through that dodgy, underneath that dodgy area at the moment. But, and it's a bit wetter too down here than last time I was here. It's been raining and there's quite a lot of water penetration. Uh, over on the right hand side, just uh, a short distance, I'd estimate that about 600 millimetres from the brick arch. There is a broken through passage in this medieval stonework and we're looking at a culvert which runs pretty well perpendicularly, trending slightly to the west, uh, perpendicular to this main channel. I stick the torch in there and we'll get a bit of an idea of what we're looking at. It should be possible to fit through that gap sometime and see where it goes. I guess that it uh, follows the path. Beautifully produced, uh, beautifully done vault here of course. Core limestone and the tooling with its uh, axe carved diagonal tooling suggests that this is the very first phase of work of Winchester Cathedral. In other words, the late 11th century, Bishop Walkland's time. And this is actually the largest Romanesque structure within the Cathedral Close. So working our way along, and I'm glad to say that in this stone vaulted section one has room to kneel so one can go across on one's knees in sort of penitential attitude. Uh, we see a privy or something coming in above the heads there. And uh, then another particularly dodgy piece. I thought previously that this was this, this was underneath the wall of the deanery, but it's not. And the problem one has here, I suppose, is that there's quite a good corbel set in the north side of the vault, uh, and a sort of vague bit of cantilevering. But over to the left, what I suppose passes for a voussoir, but it's a flat block, seems to have really very little bearing at the far end at all and uh, up above the head one can see roots and brick and rubble and I suspect we're possibly not at this point very far from the uh, not very far from the ground level bearing in mind that we're still at this distance we're still uh, beneath the south side of the yard let's have a look turn round and have a look um, and there it is, actually, viewed from here, there's not been any movement at all. It's absolutely perfectly fine. A brick vaulted section then, and evidently somebody's been here before because there's a, a phone wire, which I remember from 1982 it was there then. 
and working along, suddenly there is a moment of relief. Inexplicably, really, uh, there is an area where a storm pipe comes in on the south side, but interestingly, above one's head, we've got this uh, tunnel vaulted structure oriented north south. Uh, brick tympanum filling it up, slight sort of beehive or domening effect on the south side where it canters, cantilevers in. Don't know what this is for. Uh, it's wonderful because you've got about seven foot headroom, you can stand up. Uh, it's not very wide, there's one end, there's the other. I've measured all this, of course. And then, continuing, we go back into a lower brick section again. Entirely brick, I think. Yes, straight brick side walls, uh, turned vault. And at the end of that, there is a, a stone arch. And you've got about 1 meter 25 of stone with workman's initials carved on the south side, which I've seen before. Uh, and then we get to this kind of dam or training wall, which is evidently designed to divert the water away from the fallen in branch on the right hand side, the one that goes north, and uh, divert the, divert the water so that it flows correctly. Presumably back to the river. I think the direction of flow is probably eastwards, though it's anybody's guess this way. Over this entrance here, my goodness it's a little bit damp around here, um, we have, uh, we have a, a beehive vault above the head, uh, here, above the training wall or dam, there is a rather engaging hole. I'm taking my life in my hands, or my camera in my hands, by lowering the, everything into there, but it's a bit wet at the moment. And I have splashed along there the other day, and then taking a sharp left, there was an area which really intrigued me in 1982, because what one sees there is uh, one or two of the arches, which were stone arches, presumably separating the loose seats. Now I'm going to go south, and we have a stone vaulted section, and so we're going south, just inside the west, the east wall of the rear daughter. It's fairly low. There's been a bit of a scouring effect of uh, of water on the left hand or west east side of this area and then we're in the great stretch turning west now and there's a huge long stretch with something like 26 stone arches there's one of them separated by brickwork which is obviously later and as i say in the middle ages that brickwork would not have been there you would have had a series of stone arches and uh, between them, boarded over with loose seats. There's probably room for two monks side by side in each hole. Uh, or maybe it's the 26. And you've got 26 on the north side. All 50 odd monks could actually occupy the space between, uh, between two of those stone arches. Anyway, series of stone arches. I don't know if one can see that. There's another one. And going off into the distance. Um, we have evidence for the for the arrangement of the rear daughter, and so making my way back, no, making my way westward. Still, uh, we still got that telephone wire. Some intrepid GP, BT, whatever it was called, GPO engineer must have come crawling along here. Great fun for him, I should think, and uh, cleated, clipped this this cable to the walls. Uh, I'm still amongst the stone arches. We haven't got to the last one yet. Oh, and it's a long, long way. Well, it's something like 70 metres along this stretch, I think. I can hear water now. That's the the uh, 19th century relief drain, which flows south from the southeast corner of the bakehouse. And now suddenly here, we're, we're at the last stone arch, I think. And then, 
there is an, a, a much more spacious area above my head I, these look like bricks but I think they're stone so they're brick sized or slightly larger than brick sized stone vault here very nice it might be coal stone some yellowish stone and uh, otherwise the walls are pretty random and contain quite a lot of brick and rubble and I rather think that this this stonework above my head is probably 19th century as well given that it's supported on a predominantly 19th century wall so you've got this quite nice section where I can really stand right up and then need just to say it's back to wormer mode or low crawling low kneeling mode for a brick section I might as well pursue my humble uh, dreary way along uh, here and the sound of water is now oops splash on ahead oh there's another transverse arch there so and another well that's interesting and another so this there's, there's yet more transverse arches i may be wrong in suggesting they stop back there and here is the escape route and what we see here is rather fast flowing water and it's coming down a 24 inch pipe to right and left and above there is a manhole and that manhole in fact is the one the hole, uh, some concrete slabs at the south end of the bakehouse in the deanery kitchen yard uh, one could get out there if necessary though one would have to be careful uh, if one slipped it was propelled by the flowing water down that 24 inch pipe one would uh, be disappearing like uh, something unspeakable for several hundred yards 200 yards anyway down to the north east corner of the judge's lodgings and then taking a sharp bend to the left going underneath the pilgrim school music rooms if they're still there on the on the north side of the pilgrim's yard uh, at least you get some musical entertainment but then you'd probably get stuck uh, because I think everything gets rather thin again underneath the Pilgrim's Yard. But I'm going to do the reverse journey and keep waffling on because these observations I'm making are important. And not least the fact that we have another stone arch uh, quite near the West End. Oh, and above the head, my goodness, what have we got here? How fascinating. Um, we have got an access point, I would think. There's a stone slab over, and we've got a, about eight feet up from the, eight to ten feet up from the, uh, from the silt. Making my way perilously back, or well, perilously as regards the camera, there's quite a lot of water coming through the roof too. Uh, to left-hand side, I can see some, there are stone blocks at lower level, but the level of the silt means that one hardly sees anything of the side walls. It's simply that there's been a bit more scouring on the north side here. And uh, working my way back, uh, we have brick on the north, uh, south side, quite modern looking. And then we get to the open section, the higher section, with the small brick-sized voussoirs that I mentioned earlier. Oh, take a breather. Oh, nice to be able to kneel up here. Uh, I hope the battery will last. On a previous occasion I was about here when the light gave out. But we seem to be okay. <laughs> well, we don't know whether we're okay. Um, yes, there's the first of the brick arches. I'm going to see if I can't count them. Sorry, the stone arches. There's, that could be the stub. I think it is of number one of this section. One, two, much more definite one, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, they're pretty regular. Eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve and 
13, that was a bit of a long space there, and 14, we might be missing one between those two, and, well, 15, and then just beyond that, we've got the corner. A few little roots coming through. Uh, and then, right angle bend to the left, now going northwards. Uh, oh, dear me. Here we are. There's in front of us is the the training wall or, or half dam leading into the very wet section. Ah, right, past the stone, commemorating J. Carr, C. Phillips, G. Phillips, H. Strip, H. Goodyear, H. Sharp, and dated 1871, and then 74 has been added on the right. The other voussoir is a bit more illegible, seems to be a IG or something like that, CR, very difficult to make up the dates. And there are, there's graffiti on the right hand side as well, but I photographed all that. We have a date of 1829 in that really rather nicely formed stonework, which I fancy probably is of that, of that date. It's not medieval anyway, I'm not sure what the stone is. Right, backwards we go through that little short arch section uh, into a reasonably high brick section. Then we get to the uh, the cross fault, which we mentioned before. The wall on the north side is an interesting and it is of core limestone, but impossible to tell whether the joints are very thick, whether that's an original 11th century feature. In other words, whether this, this area here did correspond to another chimney. It may well have done. I just don't know. Yeah, and then we're back into the, the brick and looming up ahead, the ominous looking corbelled out bit. Stay there, stay there, please stay there. Shouldn't shake, don't sneeze, avoid sudden, <laughs> sudden movements. Right, you can fall down now. Uh, so we're in the stone section, up ahead. Well, some people would think that maybe that doesn't look too firm, but uh, I put my trust in steel and let's hope it stays there. And then, of course, we're back into worm territory. Oh, I might as well keep everything going till the end. And through that, crawling along, actually, I'm not on my tummy at all. 18 inches, I'm on my forearms and knees, but they're just not scraping. And here we are, and oh joy, oh joy, uh, we have open air. So now we're going eastwards, and the first section is pretty jolly low, it has to be said. Uh, it's about 18 inches again, possibly a little less this time. But perhaps I'm not the first to have been down at least this section, because in the foreground one can see a junction box to what I think probably was a telephone cable. Uh, ooh, righty. And this was the bit where I did have to experiment the other day to see whether one can actually crawl, do a, a snake crawl backwards. Uh, it worked the other day, so let's hope one still can. On the right hand side, the sort of buttress like part of a stone arch. Uh, and this continues in brick and stone on the right hand side. It's obviously a brick culvert uh, with a, sorry, a stone culvert which had a brick arch turned over it. And, uh, and uh, the things then Oh yes, we've got at least 19 inches now, and it is jolly wet. 
and there's a water pipe, a drain pipe, coming across. Oh, and uh, and then I can hear water. No, I haven't gone very far, <laughs> about 10 metres, I suppose. And this low brick continues, but alas, what I can see up ahead, and I think this is what stymied me before, previously, is uh, there's a much lower section, and I think this is what Atkinson noted. Uh, oh, well, I suppose I better keep going. I know I can go backwards. <laughs> there's just room, crank, to squeeze underneath that water pipe, but I can see already that the sort of closing wall, a low lintel-like structure up ahead, that looks seriously, seriously low. I'm a bit disinclined to go through there. Coming in from the left there's a drain pipe, which obviously had probably storm water, it's obviously had water flowing through there because it's scarred out the mud bed and in the foreground uh, one can just now see there is a slab over so possibly this might be expressed on the surface by some sort of uh, manhole cover and we might need to clear all the rubbish or other the stone blocks which are at the moment in the old stone yard to see what's going on I can't really see what's what's happening ahead I really don't think, uh, think there's going to be room to squeeze underneath that uh, that lintel. There is actually a serious possibility of getting stuck. Uh, having said that, it's a bit pathetic, isn't it? Not to just check out. Oh, uh, God, it's low. That's my head. Uh, oh, that stone lintel. Well, it, no, it is. I would not fit through that underneath it and I can't see it opening up higher beyond so reluctantly JC says time to go into reverse there's the storm water pipe coming in on the left uh, yeah what a jolly place this is right reverse gear <laughs> 